In this video, we'll take a look at the free version of Defender for Cloud and how you can use the posture management, the secure score, and the rec recommendations that it provides to help secure your Azure subscription. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Azure. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the free version of Defender for Cloud, which includes some posture management solutions, uh, just general recommendations, and gives you a good baseline for the resources that you have deployed in your Azure subscription. So we can start, uh, I already have it here in the, the menu, but if we're looking for the server, uh, the service, we can use the search bar, put in Defender, uh, it's called Microsoft Defender for Cloud, we'll select that. And um, we'll be taken to the overview page where we see the security posture and all of that. Um, if this is the first time that you've navigated to this screen, um, the overview page is going to look a little bit different. Um, it's probably actually going to bring you to the getting started page the first time. Um, and it'll prompt you to upgrade to spend the money initially, or there'll be a skip button right here, uh, which I've already you know, kind of pressed or, or not using right now. So uh, the first time that you see the screen uh, might be a little bit different. Um, so if you want just the free version, you do not have to click the upgrade button immediately. Uh, you can click the, the skip button that's that's shown here, uh, and you'll still be able to get to the, the, the basic resources and things here. So just going back to overview, we'll just talk about a, a couple of the free version things. Uh, one is this just overall general security posture. So uh, Defender for Cloud kind of has two versions. There's a, a basic free version and an enhanced version. The basic free version gives you general recommendations based off of the Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark. So these are just kind of the baseline security things that Microsoft has defined. Uh, they're in line with the Center, uh, Center for Internet Standards in terms of just network security, vulnerability assessments. You, know, you should be doing X, Y, and Z when you're um, deploying resources, managing resources in Azure. So the security posture just gives you an overview of you know, what is the, the current configuration today of those Azure resources? Um, what is that baseline configuration in the cloud security benchmark? And, and then what is, the, what is the difference? What is the difference between the two? And so it'll give you just this general card visualization as to where you're at, uh, or you can navigate over to the recommendations blade and it'll list out all of the recommendations in the control categories that are defined there in the, the Center for Internet Standards and as part of that cloud security benchmark. So don't be afraid uh, or don't be concerned that you know maybe the initial secure score that you see uh, is, is maybe pretty low. Uh, it actually it kind of is just with uh, like default deployments. If you go and deploy virtual machines, storage accounts, some app services, Kubernetes clusters, um, just the, 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 the general default deployment doesn't actually follow all of the security baselines, right? So uh, the with just going out and deploying resources like that, it's pretty common that a secure score is below 50%. Now here in the, the list of recommendations, you'll see here again, all of the different control categories. These are just uh, areas that those recommendations in the baseline exist. Um, and they're organized by default by the score that it might provide. And so that gives it a little bit of weight in terms of, you know, like this recommendation is maybe a little more important than this other recommendation. Uh, and then tells you the potential score increase if you were to go and, you know, resolve the configuration, make the change to that specific resource in that category. So like the most important or one of the most important would be uh, multi-factor authentication, making sure that any type of privileged account, admin account uh, uses MFA to be able to log into the Azure portal. Um, the second highest is management ports, making sure that anything that's exposed to the internet, mostly virtual machines, uh, doesn't have SSH or RDP access just open to the internet. And so uh, the report and the recommendations here, one of the first ones says uh, internet facing VMs should be protected with network security groups. And it shows here that uh, of the 168 virtual machines that are out in the, the two subscriptions that I'm showing here, um, two of them apparently have open ports or, or don't have um, network security groups. And then the, the second one is specific to those management ports and maybe 15 of these VMs um, have exposed management ports, either SSH or, or remote desktop. 
So if we look at this one specifically, uh, management port should be closed. We can drill down into this and it'll give us a list of the unhealthy resources and the healthy resources in our environment, in our subscription. Now it tells us remediation steps, you know, hey, we need to go into the, the NSG and, you know, probably block 3389, block port 22. Um, and then that will, every 24 hours, the Defender for Cloud will, you know, kind of poll, look at the configuration of those NSGs, uh, and then update this page, you know, update the, uh, the recommendations. And so the idea would be is that, um, you know, for any of these VMs that are unhealthy, uh, the, the ports are exposed, we should probably go and take a look at why. Now, some of them might be a jump box and it's on purpose, or, you know, this is the way that we're accessing the system, like we, we need to have this configuration that way. Um, we can, for some of these, or for, you know, the ones that we'd want, create an exemption. And so an exemption uh, allows you to say that, you know, for this resource, can't just be me, um, for this resource, we're either going to, um, you know, mitigate or, or waive this risk. Maybe if we're mitigating it, we're using like a, a third-party service. Um, if we know that this is something that we just need for the business, uh, it has to be configured this way, um, then we can waive the risk and just say that, you know, yeah, we understand maybe it doesn't follow best practice, but it's configured the way it needs to be configured. Um, we could set an expiration date. That way maybe we revisit this in six months. You know, we don't forget about it and then just set it to, um, to, to ignore it permanently. We can say that, okay, we're going to look at this, you know, every quarter, every six months, every year, we can set expiration dates there. And so exemptions let you kind of clean up the recommendation list without actually having to go in and make all the configuration changes. But so that's one example of, uh, of a recommendation. Um, you know, all of these recommendations will go out and only give you the ones based on your environment. So if you've got um, other PaaS services, uh, you don't have virtual machines, you're only using PaaS or vice versa, it's only going to show you the things that are relevant to you. And it'll give you the recommendations, uh, again, in the order of ideally increasing that secure score uh, to be able to, to protect the environment a bit more. Another uh, thing that we get on the free version are workbooks. And so workbooks are just uh, queries to the underlying uh, monitor environment. So all of the, the kind of the backend data where Defender for Cloud is gathering this information is from the configuration, is from the diagnostic logs. You know, it's all just Azure monitor stuff in the background um, that we're kind of surfacing with a, a security presence or security point of view. And so... Uh, there are specific Defender for Cloud workbooks where we can see maybe our secure score over time. You know, once we've got our uh, environment set up the way we want it, we need to kind of run reports on what the secure score is. And we can see the last 30 days, maybe how it's changed. Um, something, you know, new deployment in the environment, how did that impact the, the secure score? You've went through and started to work through these recommendations. How did that impact the secure score? You know, it's good for... Um, leadership type reporting, nice visual graphs and charts and things about you know, the, the progress you're making in the environment. So all of these workbooks are, are really just Custo queries in the background. Like if we were gonna create our own workbook or you wanted to modify any of the, the, the built-in ones here, you can edit the workbooks. Um, all of the queries are based off of KQL. And so you can create these, customize these, do, what you never, do whatever you need to do, uh, also included in the free version. There's also a community tab here where there's blog posts, videos, you know, other um, maybe community built workbooks where you can find on GitHub that are uh, that are available to you. That's kind of the, the the basics for the free version. You know, it's really around the recommendation list here uh, and the Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark. Um, if you need regulatory compliance or some specific resource things, those all come with the paid version. Uh, which we'll talk about in later videos. All right, so that's one down.
Uh, so you have two SSH enabled with no network security group. Yeah. Like one of the other, um, I'll make sure to mention this with the enhanced version. Like one of the paid benefits is or features is just in time access to where, you know, okay, great. Maybe we need SSH open, right? Like you got to be able to SSH that VM, but, um, you go in first and then do a just in time request. So it adds the network security group rule, you know, just for say like the next four hours while you need to SSH in. Um, and then after that four hours, the network security group rule kind of disappears on its own automatically. You don't have to think about it. If you learned something new today, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel to learn more. I stream every Friday afternoon on Twitch if you'd like to come by and ask questions. Uh, thanks for watching.